I'm Professor Lloyd Knox from the University of California at Davis Department of Physics. And I study something called the Cosmic Microwave Background, or CMB for short. The CMB was discovered in 1964 and is arguably the most important observable in all of cosmology. To help us introduce the CMB to you, we're going to start off in conversation with my 12-year-old son, Teddy. Hey, Teddy. Hey, Dad. Is this a good time to help me with that video we were talking about? The video? Yeah, sure. Let's go to the kitchen. So, Teddy, you know I work on something a lot called the cosmic microwave background, right? Right. That's what you did your thesis on. Yes. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Uh, and, and 15 years later, I'm still working on it. Your thesis or the cosmic microwave background? The cosmic microwave background. So, do you know what the cosmic microwave background is? No. Okay. Do you want me to tell you? If it helps the video. <laughs> do you, are you curious at all? I probably won't understand it. That's what I thought you might be concerned about. Okay. But if you're going to explain it to the viewers, then sure. Just as we can center a Google Maps image around Davis, or anywhere else, we can map our universe with us located at the center. In this video, Lloyd and Teddy are viewing the universe with our entire galaxy at the central point. Holy crap, that's big. So the universe used to be... It's a big cross of paper. Opaque. Opaque? Okay. Yeah, what does opaque mean? That means light won't go through it and you can't see through it. Right. The early universe looked very different from the universe of today. Instead of vast regions of empty space, the entire universe was filled with a hot, dense mess we call the primordial fluid. The primordial fluid was made up of protons, shown here in red, electrons, shown in green, and light. For 300,000 years after the Big Bang, the universe was so hot that the electrons and protons could not stay together without being torn apart by a collision. During this time, light would hit free electrons and change course a process known as scattering. As the universe expanded, it cooled, and the electrons joined the protons to make neutral atoms. With the electrons captured, the light could travel unimpeded. The universe had become transparent. What do we, what does somebody who's right here actually see? Well, lots of light. So which, lots, lots of light, lots right. Of light. And where is that light coming from? That, that Everywhere else. Everywhere else, right. And since this light will encompass the whole darn galaxy, right. light from here will take a really long time right. to get over here. Right, because even this dot is maybe the size of our whole galaxy, and that takes light 100,000 years to cross the galaxy. It's a long time. That's a long time. So, so... Should I grab a ruler? Four, we'll make this 14 billion light years. Okay, so it's it's a centimeter to a billion light years. Yeah. That's a long, that's that's a huge scale difference. One centimeter equals one billion light years. So we're here. Oh, good. Two billion years after the universe becomes neutral. Right. This light that's arriving to us, where did it come from? Two billion light years away. Right, right. Two right. centimeters away. Right. So all that light came from... So here's two centimeters, or two billion light years. All that light came from some... All the regions of space that are two billion light years wow. away. So all that light... The light that was headed towards us when the universe became neutral, two billion years later, it reaches us here. Okay. Now this actually happened about fourteen, well, thirteen point seven billion years ago. This transition. Okay. Okay. So how far away? So the light we're seeing now from this transition, where did it come from? Where did the light? Where did that light come from? The light that got released and started traveling freely. Okay. That was 13.7 million years ago? Right. So now we're getting stuff 
around here. That's right. 13.7 centimeters away. So, here's a circle around us. Every point on this, if I'd drawn it a little better, would be 13.7 billion years away from us. So at this point, when the universe became neutral, okay. right, light was going in all directions, just like it is everywhere. Some of it happened to be going towards us. Okay. And, and so 13.7 billion later, years later, this light arrives at Earth. All right. So every and everywhere around here. So let's see. At this point, where's the light? What, when the, when the light was released and it start traveling freely, what directions was it going? All around it. All directions, right? Even the ones that you didn't draw. Even the ones I didn't draw. That's right. If we're seeing this light now, what? Are, where did this light last scatter off of matter? Oh, right. Sure. That's right. So that's what we're seeing. Well, not not most recently. It, well, most recently, right, it got absorbed in some detector in a telescope. Right. Yep, that's right. So what do you think it looks like? The light? Yeah. Whatever the light's coming from. So. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Like, the light coming from you looks like you. Right. The light coming from this looks like this. Alright, are you curious to, to, to take a look, a map of the microwave background now, see what it looks like? Okay, I think the video is too. So here what you're looking at is a view at the night sky on Earth, except that some lines have been drawn in for the constellations and some stars are labeled. And what I want to do is now show you, so this is what the sky looks like. So, sky rotating by. Now let me switch to what you'd see if our eyes could see light with millimeter wavelengths. There you go. That's what the microwave background looks like. Wow. Just a big green. Green. Yeah. It's not very interesting, is it? Is that's it? Everywhere? Basically. But if we remove the average brightness of the light, mm -hmm. then we can start to see differences from one place to another. But only after removing that average brightness can we see that. Okay. So if you take I've seen pictures of that kind of stuff. Right. It looks like thermal vision. Mm, it does kind of look like thermal vision, doesn't it? So here we've, we've taken off... Wait, yeah. what's the... There's a big brown strip back there. Good question. The big brown strip is emission from our own galaxy. Okay. Oh, that's, that's what we see. We see the Milky Way. And it's all that that's right. kind of like star, dusty, brighty looking stuff. Right. Okay. So when, when we see the Milky Way at night, some of it looks darkened out. Okay. That's where dust clouds are, are blocking our view of stars in the okay. Milky Way. But those dust clouds, they're glowing in the infrared and uh, longer wavelengths. And that's that's what shows up in these in these maps. Okay. And why does the microwave background look all green and then, then you remove the average intensity and it looks green and yellow and blue and red? And well, these are made up color scales, right? Colors are for optical light, well, right? So is there a color key that, that shows us what's this? Okay. So, 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 what's green light represented in this? Well, the bluer the light, the less intense it is. The redder the light, the more intense. All right. And, and then the brown is... Well, even further off the scale. So, the galaxy is very, very bright at these wavelengths. Okay. But out away from the galaxy, this is brighter because this fluid of hydrogen and helium was denser in that direction 13.7 billion years ago and it was less dense here so here it's brighter we're getting more light from this region and less light from this region in this video we learned that the universe used to be hot and dense and full of electrons atomic nuclei and photons in this medium the photons couldn't travel very far before scattering off of a free electron so the medium was opaque as the universe expanded and cooled the electrons combined with the nuclei, becoming neutral atoms, and the photons were able to propagate freely through this neutral gas of hydrogen and helium. 13.7 billion years later, here on Earth, we can see the photons that are arriving to us today from that time, 13.7 billion years ago, and we can directly see what the universe was like 13.7 billion light years away and 13.7 billion years ago. In our next video, we're going to study the patterns that we see in the 
cosmic microwave background, in particular fluctuations of hot and cold spots on the cosmic microwave background, and how those arise from sound waves propagating in that opaque medium in the early universe. Yeah. Fortune smiles yeah. We're in the vicinity of anti- 